Hey everybody, Coach Lauren here with episode number one of Not Poolside Chats. I am just going to pick the topics unless anybody has something they want to hear my thoughts on. So for this week, we're going to talk about, actually not this week, today, we're going to talk about The How of Happiness, which is a book I'm reading, and we're going to talk about one of the happiness activities. There's two that I really like for the swim team, and so this is the first one. And it's called Savoring Life's Joys. So for this, I'm going to read part of it, talk about it, read part of it, talk about it. Parents tell their children to be good so that they can grow up to be moral adults and responsible citizens. Teachers tell their pupils to study hard so that they can earn good grades, get into colleges, and find decent jobs. Supervisors tell their employees to work hard and aim high so that they can win pay raises and promotions. Senior friends tell their still working chums that the golden years of retirement are near. And if you're a little like me, even when the present is wonderful, you can't take full pleasure in it, as you're already imagining being nostalgic for it in the future. We rarely seem to live in and savor the present moment, believing that what counts most will happen in the future. We postpone our happiness, convincing ourselves that tomorrow will be better than today. So I think we can understand why I read that and sort of thought it was applicable to everything we're going through right now. We can be happy even today. We can be happy even in a pandemic. We can be happy even though we're struggling. We can find beauty in the struggle. That's what I'm gonna start calling homeschooling every day, beauty in the struggle. So today I read a really tough email just talking about the team and billing and moving forward, how everything's gonna be. And I'm stressed about it. I'm stressed about the whole thing. I'm stressed about not being able to see our swimmers, about not being able to run practice, about what this looks like for meets. Like I've said, I'm heartbroken for the kids that didn't get to do those meets that they had qualified for. It's just, it's tough, it's not fair, and it's really easy to get bogged down in all of that. And at the end of the day though, we should still be happy for everything we do have. We should still be happy that we had those opportunities, that those kids got those cuts, and that we'll have more opportunities. We don't ever know what's going to happen and I think that this situation really shed a light on that that we're not all used to and especially I think for swimmers where we are so conditioned to doing the same thing every day that this is melting our brains a little bit so we can be happy even now we will get back to swimming we will get back to the pool we will get back to our community and in the meantime let's find ways to be happy now let's be creative let's be community-minded Let's be responsible in how we do those things and remember our civic duty to stay at home. Um, so my thoughts were, today I was really stressed out. I had so many beautiful responses to my email. I had parents offering to sponsor kids to swim. I had parents telling me that, you know, they're struggling too, but we're going to get through this together. I had coaches offering to not be paid if that helps. I just, I was sort of overwhelmed by the amazingness of the response from everybody and the support and the community and that we can feel so connected when being the most disconnected we've ever been. And, and that's why I really do believe that a lot of things are going to come out stronger on the other side of this. And I think that our team will too. Um, so there are silver linings of everything. And for me, the silver lining of today and all of this is the connection and gratitude for me and what's a really hard time. So if everyone wants to, you know, I mean, I'm new to all this, but if we want to say like everybody post a comment on here about what happiness do you postpone or what do you feel like you could be happy about and savor today? So the next section is, yet the ability to savor the positive experiences in your life is one of the most important ingredients of happiness. Most people truly understand what it means to savor after overcoming uncomfortable or painful symptoms or following a brush with mortality or a major scare. When you have a toothache and it's gone, you suddenly delight in its absence. When you're overwhelmed with terrific allergies that abruptly dissipate, you relish breathing freely. After a near-death experience or an alarming diagnosis, you may also feel able, or at least temporarily, 
to appreciate and enjoy the good things in your life, to live each day as if it were your first day and your last day. So my thoughts on this is uh, that we all do this. And I prompted some of the senior swimmers to take time to really examine what role different institutions play in their life and their happiness. And I challenge everyone to do that, to look at being without, what do you really miss? What do you miss about not being able to swim or not being able to go somewhere or not being able to see someone? And I think what you miss will tell you what you love. So I wrote down a couple things that I miss. So I miss, I mean, big picture, I miss everybody being at the pool together in the sense of community that comes from all of us being there. I miss the end of 4.30 a.m. practices. I do not miss the beginning when I'm bothering everyone to get in. Um, doing that last tough set and everyone feeling accomplished before they all start their days. All the littles that draw at the whiteboard while waiting for practice to start. The excitement and outrage over swimmer of the day and the fact that I never pick it and make someone else pick it. The groans of agony, especially on Wednesdays when I write the setup, and seeing parents and community at practice. So something to think about is what are some things you miss? What, are they, what roles did you feel like they played in your life before you were forced to take a break from them? And what roles do you feel like they play now? And this is in all areas, you know, I mean, and I really think about this, you know, when you stub your toe, you don't ever appreciate the fact that your toes don't hurt until you stub your toe. So what can you appreciate today, right now, that could change? And then you would wish you had appreciated it. You can think of savoring as having a past, present and future component. You can savor the past by reminiscing about the good old days. You can savor the present by wholly living in, being mindful of, and relishing the present moments. Finally, you can savor the future by anticipating and fantasizing about upcoming positive events. This is an element of optimistic thinking. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. And there's some strategies on to foster savoring and then the research behind them and they kind of combine those different parts. So of this, oh, sorry. Of course, this is easier said than done. First, like all happiness enhancing strategies, effort and motivation are necessary for true savoring. Our attention is often brimming with intrusive and persistent thoughts about the past and present conversations, tasks undone, problems unsolved, and the future, to-do lists, plans, and committed effort is required to redirect our minds to positive experiences in the here and now. Second, as we already know, the process of hedonic adaptation leads us to obtain less and less pleasure from initially thrilling experiences. Be it the view of the snow-capped mountains on our way to work, the song of bagpipes in the town square, or the smell of our new leather jacket. With time, such sights, sounds, and aromas simply fade into the background. It takes dedicated willpower to re-appreciate those things and stop taking them for granted. The next section describes a number of specific suggestions for accomplishing just that. So basically, it's just newness can wear off and appreciation is hard to do every second every moment so these are some ways to practice and something that this book talk this book talks about is doing things intermittently so you don't practice gratitude every day you do it on sundays so when you're fostering savoring the moment you could take one of these and work on it for the day or a moment or pick one thing each day to do for a week and then change it the next week so the strategies are relish ordinary experiences. So basically this means, I forgot, I still had notes on these. Um, ordinary experiences are like meals, showers, going outside, a moment with one of your kids, cooking, something that you typically could rush through and not care about or even be annoyed about, taking that time to be in that moment and appreciate it. Um, for me, going on a walk is sort of a good one. It's easy to go on a walk and just 
you know, let your thoughts go crazy rather than being present in the walk and noticing what's around you and kind of having that moment to be connected to nature and the world and what you're doing. All right, so the next one is, oh, my quote for that one was, enjoy the little things. For one day, you may look back and realize they were the big things. So the next one is savor and reminisce with family and friends. So my idea for this one is to sit together as a family and go through pictures from a vacation or to sit with your friends and do the same thing and then to tell stories, preferably hilarious stories about whatever happened. You could also do this for some of your happiest days like weddings, graduations, swim meets. Um, this ties into the next one, which is transport yourself. So it's the same thing. Take yourself to a time where you were really happy and look at that time. And then you can use that when you're stressed to go back to that time. Like they talk about a woman that envisions herself on her mountain bike when she starts to get really stressed. Replay happy days. Um, so replay it in your mind as though you were rewinding a videotape and playing it back. Think about the events of the day and remember what happened in as much detail as you can. Don't analyze the day, don't judge it, just replay it and revel in it. We found that people who performed this exercise for eight minutes per day on three consecutive days felt more intense positive emotions four weeks later. Celebrate good news. So, especially right now, I think this is important. If you have good news, share it. If you don't, try to be happy for other people's good news. Try to find something good in every day. Be open to beauty and excellence. Don't go through life wearing blinders to everything that is touching, beautiful, virtuous, and magnificent. A lot of times we're surrounded by beauty or miracles. Like every one of our kids is a miracle but it's easy to forget that when they're screaming and running. So just taking a moment to remind yourself of the beauty that's in life and everything that we do still have, even in this really tough time. Being mindful. Okay, the next one is being mindful. Many philosophical and spiritual traditions stress the cultivation of mindfulness as a critical ingredient of well-being. So basically the idea that um, practicing mindfulness, being in the moment is really beneficial to happiness, joy, savoring the moment. There are apps now, Calm, Insight, 10% Happier, that can lead you through some meditation practices and are really helpful. This has a lot more information around it than most of the other things we're talking about in here, I think. And it is really helpful. I do mindfulness practices between sessions at swim meets, before I go to sleep, if I'm anxious about something, and just it trains your mind to be able to come back to what you're doing. I think it's very beneficial for swimmers in practice to be able to do it. We did some mindfulness stuff in the morning practices where kids had to stay present in the set for the entire thing and they had to pay attention to when they were there and when they weren't there. Also really important for swim meets, being able to be mindful in your race, focused on what you're doing. And right now, because if you sit around the entire day and think about what could be happening, what is going to happen, when things are going to be open, when they're going to be back to normal, you're going to go crazy. Just be in the moment. Everything will get figured out when it gets figured out and try to find some joy in the moments of the day. Um, Take pleasure in the senses. So basically this is pretty easy. I mean, this is momentary pleasures or this is magical moments. This is going outside and the sun is on you and you get to sit there for 10 minutes, going for a walk, having a glass of wine, eating something delicious. Instead of standing at the refrigerator and you know, eating as fast as you can, taking it with you and sitting down and enjoying it. Um, so the next one is savor with your camera. 
So the idea is to use your camera as a tool to savor the moment, but to not let it get in the way of the moment. So taking pictures, but not getting so lost in taking pictures that the moment is gone and you were just the photographer of it instead of being a part of it. And what was my last one? All right, so that was it. That is the how of happiness. Activity nine, savoring life's joys to help us get through today. So if everybody wants to comment on something that spoke to them or an idea they have or a question they have, then I can talk about those. Tomorrow, my plan is to do happiness activity number 10, committing to your goals. I think all of us having some goals during this time would be beneficial. All right, well, this was weird, but I'm gonna keep doing it. Have a great night, love you all, bye.